wings are cool. They let us fly. And not only us, also birds and, and like those flying fish. But not penguins or chickens, though. Uh, I don't think they can fly with their wings. Anyway, wings look like this, are like this, are like this, are, ladies and gentlemen, if you want some of that funk, then wings can also look like this. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how these funky looking wings work, and I'm gonna talk about some iconic planes that used such wings. Maybe you should, like, name the type of wing. Yeah, I feel like it's in the title, though. I feel like they'd know, right? So let's go over the benefits of forward swept wings. First, controllability under stall conditions. So basically, stalling means a breakdown of smooth airflow over the wing into a turbulent one. Now, stalling doesn't happen on an entire wing all at once. It happens in different sections that have different airflow. Jonathan, what the fuck are you doing? Now, on a pathetic normal swept wing, this usually happens at the tips over the ailerons. Now, when flying, losing control over the ailerons would truly cause you to be in quite the pickle. However, with the Chad forward swept wings, stalls usually occur at the wing root, not over the ailerons. Second, better maneuverability and transonic flight. Now, at this speed, shock waves tend to form at the leading edge of delta wings, once again where the ailerons are. However, with forward swept wings, this happens once again at the wing root. Um, god, what is it now? Maybe you should explain why it's always at the wing root. Jonathan, look at them. Does it look like they want a lesson in aerodynamics? No, Jonathan, no. Like any cultured person, they just want to see cool fighter jets. God! Also, I really don't feel like animating that. I knew it! Third, better maneuverability at high angles of attack. So, airflow is maintained over the surface of the wings at steeper climbs, allowing it to maneuver at a high... Because forward swept wings are placed further back on an aircraft, the center of pressure is behind the center of gravity, making it no longer necessary to add tail wings that produce an inefficient but stabilizing downward lift. If you want to learn more about this sort of lift, then you can watch this video right here, where I talk about it in the context of the F-16. Either way, pitch control can now be placed closer to the front of the aircraft by using canards. Um... Now all of this is pretty nice, but these truly jazzy looking wings have a few downsides. Like they suck for stealth, they make the plane incredibly unstable with the X-29 for example having three computers doing 40 adjustments per second, and the wings are twisty. And it takes a lot of different materials and a lot of designing in order to make them not twisty. So now that you have this information, let's talk about some iconic jets that had such wings. Wow, your range is pretty good. What? Iconic, iconic, iconic. Turn that off. So I already mentioned one, the Groomer, uh, I mean, the Grumman X-29. So yet another member of the experimental X-series planes. I talked about some other ones in this video right here. Damn, I'm unplugging my videos all over the place in this one. Anyway, like I said, one feature about this jet is that it has three computers, making up to 40 adjustments per second so that nothing goes horribly wrong, making the risk of a total system failure equivalent to the risk of a mechanical failure in a conventional system. Another funny thing about the Groomer, fuck the Grumman, was that it used the forward fuselage and nose landing gear from two existing F-5A Freedom Fighters. Did somebody say Freedom? And the control surface actuators and main landing gear were from the F-16. My beloved. Now comes the one you've all been waiting for! The man! Or the woman? Uh, equality. The myth! The legend! The SR-10! The SU-47 Barracoot. Now, unlike the X-29, the Barracoot was not an experimental aircraft at first. It was supposed to be a superiority fighter for the Soviets before the design later ended up being outdated. However, this nature meant that it was pretty impressive as a fighter jet. It had two Soloviev D-30 F-6 engines, the same ones that were used on the MiG-31, that each provided 93.1 kN of thrust and had optional two R-3D thrust vectoring nozzles. And just so you know, top speed of the MiG-31 was about 3,000 km per hour, which is absolutely nutty. So all of this meant that the Golden Eagle had a max speed of about Mach 2.2 and was able to keep up with jets like the F-22 in terms of maneuverability, pulling 9 plus Gs without structural damage. However, the best feature about this jet was that holy fuck, it looks so cool. Also, oh yeah, it has uh, S-shaped air intakes to reduce radar signature. 
So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and press the like button. Links to the Discord server and the Twitter account are in the description, as well as some additional information. So go ahead and read that if you're interested. Also, leave a comment. I like to read them and sometimes even respond. Okay, bye.